I can't believe that it's August and that it is time for another plan with me. It feels like all the months are just flying by and I was just doing the July setup. So just a huge welcome back for anybody who is joining me again this month and welcome to any newcomers to the channel and I hope you enjoy this. If you do, put the like button and consider subscribing. For this month there will be a lot of watercolour and shout out to my sister who made this possible through her gift to me. Thanks sister! So I'm just setting up here to get started with my watercolours, just getting all the little bits and pieces together. Need some clean water, your watercolours obviously, just a paper towel for some blotting. And then most importantly, your swatches of your different watercolours because those come really in handy when you're trying to set up colours and trying to mix things together. So make sure you've got that on hand and just putting that up so I can see. And of course a cup of tea, very important when setting up a bullet journal. <laughs> So as we get started here, I'm just going to start mixing some very light, dusty kind of colours. Um, so just taking a bit of the pigment, mixing in a little bit of black just to tone it down, uh, and a little bit of white, so it's some grey in there, and just loads and loads and loads of water, and just setting up my palette. I've got these beautiful rusty uh, orange and dusty blue that I'm mixing up there and, and then in a moment I will be putting together a dusty green as well. So just mixing in some white just to make it a little bit paler and a little bit more um, dusty coloured and yeah. So I'm just going to go in and draw some random shapes, some circles, some blocks, just random everywhere all over the page. I found with setting this up that if I put a base layer of water down on this paper in my bullet journal it does not react very well, it starts to buckle and it seeps into the paper and it just really doesn't work. So I found just painting it straight on just with the very watery paint was best for me. But ideally I would have preferred to have wet the page first and then put the colour on so that it just spread out a little bit better. But it didn't work and this came out okay. Really just random shapes, nothing fancy um, at all. So then what I did is I went in with a brush marker, just a black brush marker and did a silhouette outline of two ladies carrying pots. And the silhouette figures really work well on top of this background. The key is to keep them simple and just do the basic shape and outline of them. This could work really well with any type of theme to be honest. If you had this bit simple background you could put flowers and you could put a garden silhouetted theme on top of it. You could do cars, food, animals, whatever really tickled your fancy for the month you could do it would really work with this, uh, this theme. So this cover page is going to be a Dutch door, so what you see me doing here is just cutting out that little section on the right hand side, flipping it over and we'll write the headline here on the right hand side so that it shows through to the front cover page. And then what I'm going to do is add my goals and focus just underneath that flap. And that's just a nice place to put it because I didn't have space to have it on the calendar on the next page. So just a nice place to put a focus and goals for the month. So after colouring in these little diamonds, which I will use in some of my weekly spreads moving forward, I thought that this headline month looked a bit sad, 
So I decided to try and colour it in and kind of alternate the colours um, from top to bottom on the different letters. But I thought it looked a bit weird, like checker blocky, so I didn't like that. So I decided to fill it in with, with a black pen and then go over those lines with a white gel pen just to make it look again like letters. And it actually worked out quite well. So here is the cover page. I really like it. I love the watercolour feel. And I decided to bring that over into the next couple of spreads as well. And before moving on to the next spread, it's vital that you refresh and rejuvenate with a sip of tea. It's very important when bullet journal planning. So as we move on to the next spread, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do here. I didn't know if I wanted to put the watercolour at the bottom or the top and it took me a while to decide. But eventually I decided to just do a strip at the bottom and here you see me just testing the masking tape to see it wouldn't rip my page up. I didn't this time but foreshadowing for the next bit it does rip the page so try and choose tape that isn't very sticky or that won't rip your paper even though you tested it anyway I digress so I taped off this bottom section here and just did the same as I did on the cover page similar color palette with blues and yellows yellowy brownie ochre kind of colors and green and just did random shapes and blobs and squares across the bottom of the page there there is nothing more satisfying than peeling the tape back when it works so the second part of the spread is just to fill out these very simple stick figurines of kids playing and there's a little guy there with his tire and these little guys are playing soccer and then we'll add a third one there on the left hand side once it has dried a little bit better. Going in then to complete the habit tracker, there are six habit spaces. I haven't quite decided what those habits are going to be just yet. I have a general idea but haven't quite settled in yet. I've noticed I've been trying to track a whole bunch of things that I actually don't want to be doing so I need to have a bit of a brainstorm of what are the most important habits that I really really want to develop. Just use the same font as throughout the entire spread. However, when I went over it, I went a little bit too excited there with the lines on that E in meal plans. It looks terrible. Don't worry. There we go. Fixed it. It's all good. It's all fine. And just going in here to do the final little guy who is playing with a wire car. Not the best car drawer to be fair, but there you go. You get the idea. It's not about being perfect. And that just finishes off the spread as I write in the week numbers and just put a very faint grey drop shadow on all the boxes just to help them pop out. Flipping over to the next spread which is going to be the calendar for the month, I am going with a very similar theme for this page and with the watercolour and the silhouetted images. I realised at this point after mixing all my colours together and all the different things I wanted to use that oh maybe I should put some tape down, what a great idea. So there you go, by the magic of editing there is tape down on the page now and just went in again and made some random shapes with the watercolour paints and then realised, oh wait, uh, tape up the other side too, good idea, there you go, tape it all down <laughs> and we put the watercolour in. Um, yeah, it looks really good, I really like the way it came out, especially on this page, it just looks really organic and it doesn't matter what you put down, the shapes can be random and different colours and overlap, in fact they should overlap, they look great when they overlap, just really, just play with whatever, whatever speaks to you on the day. And then once dry you can go in and add in the shape. So on this page I am doing pot silhouettes 
which is really simple, just two, three simple pots at the bottom of the page. It really is a pretty minimalist page in terms of decorations. The most complex thing is the watercolour background, to be honest, it's really so simple. But then, this is where things went downhill as I started to peel off the tape. You'll see here it started to just rip up my journal and it was just a horrible, horrible feeling as I tried to pull off the tape. Anyway, I managed very slowly, carefully to rip um, off the tape as carefully as I could. See, there's just little bits of paper everywhere. And yeah, I took that away and there you go, it's all okay now. <laughs> Kind of. uh, just a few little pieces so I guess like just to test your tape properly and just make sure that it doesn't make a mess of your bullet journal would be a great idea um, so yeah I'm just going in here with a yellow ochre kind of color uh, brush marker just to mark out the calendar just a simple grid which I find really works for me just having these big boxes that I can write in everything that I need to do and then just the title in the same way we did on the cover page with coloring in the letters and putting in the white gel pen lines and overall a simple page but a really effective one at that And the final spread for this video is the setup of my first weekly spread and here I'm going for something slightly different. I decided to go for a very stylistic portrait kind of image of just a lady standing here with all these beautiful shapes and lines that I was going to colour in in different colours. and. To be honest, I saw quite a few of these kinds of things that inspired me when I did my Google search. So it's not a complete original, but right, art is never really completely original, is it? Uh, we just kind of get inspiration from other places and take it from there. So after drawing the outline with my black marker, I went in to just color it in with the brush markers that I had. So I only really have two, three brush markers that I used for this and unfortunately I don't have a brown color marker. So what I decided to do was actually take my kind of rusty red marker and that yellow ochre marker and just overlay the red over the yellow ochre which really gave me this beautiful brown and you can't really see it so well on the video clip right now but it does separate the colors out from each other so they've got that rich rusty red kind of color and then this brown color um, and it really looks quite pretty so you don't have to get all the different colors of all the different types of stationery if you want you can definitely mix and match and overlay just to match colors as you want to to get the effect you're looking for which it's always good you don't have to keep buying stationery although if you're looking for an excuse to buy stationery you shouldn't need one you should just get the stationery that you want because stationery is awesome And as I was setting up the rest of the page, I was just adding in my little home tasks there. I wanted to add the days of the week, realized I hadn't put them in on the previous page. So that's what I'm doing over here, just adding in the dates here. And then flipping back to this page and just completing the dates. And on the little block there, I'm gonna put my personal tasks like I always do using that Alistair method that I've spoken about before. And that sums up this page. I love this portrait. It's very different from the previous pages, but it really does still fit within the theme. And I absolutely love how that portrait turned out. I think it is so, so beautiful. So I'm very, very happy and thrilled with this page. I think it looks great. And that's it for this bullet journal setup. 
as I do a quick flip through here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate the support and I absolutely love this theme. I think it turned out so cool and very cute and I can't wait to get into it. Still got a few more pages of July to get through but can't wait to jump into this one and start using it. So once again, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for watching to the end. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you are interested in seeing more bullet journal videos. I have some ideas for some future projects, so stay tuned for that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.